So internal resistance um, is all coming down to, to this idea of what's going on inside this battery. So if you see that that battery has 1.5 volts coming out of it, it's got a positive and a negative terminal, as indicated on the symbol here, then you would generally expect to get 1.5 volts out of that particular battery. So if you connect that up to something, you would expect that you get 1.5 volts. And everything that we've learned up to this point and higher has suggested that that is the case. The, the something goes on in here between the, the two terminals of this battery with the chemicals that provides energy to the, the charges to, to carry energy around the circuit. So any sort of calculation you do with um, electrical circuits is really you looking at what's happening to the energy as it's transported around the circuit. If we connect this battery up to a bulb, then the little charges that are in the battery are, are going to uh, basically be transported um, down to that bulb and you'll see an energy transformation there from electrical energy into, into light energy. Uh, the energy which you give to those charges is determined by the voltage that the battery has. Um, so in this case, if we call that just a standard sort of 1.5 volt battery, um, you would expect to get 1.5 volts out of that. So if you then connect that battery to some sort of component, this could be any component at all, but there's always going to be some element of resistance in an external circuit. Um, resistance which we indicate with, with a capital R. We've still got our, our positive and negative terminals here and we've got 1.5 volts. We're still using this 1.5 volt battery. Um, this uh, resistance here is what we call the, ex the external resistance, what we are ultimately going to call the external resistance. That's basically the resistance of the circuit. So if you're given a circuit like that, this could be a bulb, it could be a resistor, it could be a motor, it could be any sort of type of component. We're just uh, looking at it as one singular resistor. You can call that um, a load resistor or an external resistor. It's just your total resistance of, of the circuit. So if you were asked to solve that problem at standard grade, then you, you'd look and you'd see, right, I've got, I've got V equals 1.5, I've got R, um, and you'll probably have I as well. So you've got the, the current, which flows in the circuit there. And then you'll ultimately go on to use uh, V equals IR to solve things for this circuit. So you might want to figure out what the resistance is. You'll know um, current and you'll know voltage. So it's easy to do using V equals IR. Similarly, if you're looking to figure out what the current is, you might know V and you might know R. So you can figure out the current from there. Um, that's what we would do at sort of standard grade level. But it doesn't actually work like that because there's a small problem in that if we take <coughs> a voltmeter and we put it across um, this battery, and we connect this to some sort of external resistor, external resistance, you know, basically any sort of circuit, anything in a circuit is going to have some kind of external resistance, then you would expect that this voltmeter is going to read 1.5 volts when you connect it to something, but it doesn't. Um, and that's where we get to the idea of internal resistance. So we can't just simply go ahead and use V equals IR because this value of V is not all accounted for. Some of that has gone missing. So instead of being 1.5 volts, you know, this might be, depending on the internal resistance of the circuit, could be 1.4 volts. So we've got 0.1 volts that's gone missing somewhere. So the question is, you know, where has it gone? And the reason some has gone missing is because we have some sort of internal resistance associated with the battery. So rather than just looking at this symbol of the battery with its positive and its negative terminals, the true symbol of a battery is one that includes a really small resistor there. It's not just a small resistor for, uh, for no reason. It's a small resistor because this resistance is small. We've still got this resistance that is our circuit that we're connected to. But when we connect this circuit up to that, the voltage across this will drop. So the 1.5 now becomes this value E, which is the EMF. It's the electron moving force. Uh, it's called electro electromotive force is what EMF stands for, but it's basically an electron moving force. So it's what causes the electrons to, to move around the circuit and carry their energy around the circuit. So this is the energy that the battery gives to the charges. But there are charges in here, there are chemicals in here in between those two plates, and there is a certain amount of resistance associated with them. So it's not just about this external part, the resistance of the circuit and the components that you can see, it's about the resistances that you can see that are inside that battery between those terminals. So charges are getting transported from one terminal to another, 
getting moved between this area here. And in order to do that, you've got to overcome some sort of forces of resistance. You know, everything has resistance of some description. Um, it would be unrealistic to assume that, you know, a battery is any different. So we indicate a small amount of resistance has been lost, a small amount of energy rather has been lost due to this uh, small R here, which is our internal resistance. We've still got a current flowing around here, and that current, because this is a series circuit, is the same at all points. It's just that we're introducing this idea that this value, this E value, which we earlier called 1.5 volts, is only 1.5 volts when it's not connected to something. As soon as you connect it to something and the charges begin to move, then internal resistance takes effect and basically takes away some of that voltage. So we've still got probably the majority of that voltage, the majority of that energy being supplied to this external circuit, most of that 1.5, but some of it's getting used up in here. So what internal resistance equation really does is looks at all the energy in the circuit and, and totals it up. So if you want to, you know, we're still using V equals IR, but we're really extending that to all parts of the circuit. So you end up with something that looks like this. And all that is, is a consideration of the, the energy in the circuit. I times R tells you what sort of voltage you're gonna lose in here inside this dotted box and I times big R as, as before it, it gives you the voltage in this external part of the circuit. You know that they've both got to add up to this energy that you start off with from the battery, this EMF. So all you're doing is summing those together. Sometimes it looks like this. But both of those equations do the same thing. The equation that you'll get in your, your data sheet, you get two equations in your data sheet, you get E equals V plus I times small r, so this is really just the same as that, and you also get a more complicated thing that looks like this, uh, sigma E is equal to sigma times I r, so all that means is that your EMF is equal to the sum of your voltages, so it's equal to I r plus I times small r. So this little r here is, is your internal resistance. So if you do I times r, that gives you something that we call uh, the lost volts. So your lost volts, that's the, the voltage that goes missing when you, you connect this battery to an external part of the circuit. That's equal to I times small r, which leaves us with this term here, this I times big r. That's the what we call the terminal potential difference. So VTPD is equal to I times big r. Sometimes you're going to use this equation on its own. Plug all your values in and figure out something for current, for example, or internal resistance. Sometimes it might be easier to just know what each of those equations stands for and use them separately. As long as you understand that current's going to be the same all the way through here, that internal resistance never changes, and how to identify each of these values from a diagram, then it's not really much more complicated than that. So I'll show you uh, an example of how we can apply that. So this is the 2002 question 24. The battery has an EMF of 6 volts and an internal resistance of 2. So you can see your, your values here, how they, they correlate with what we've just looked at previously. There is your small resistor, your battery with its EMF shown above it, and you know the external resistance of the circuit. This is a wee bit more complicated because you've got two resistors there, but I would still advise you, you to look at it in the same way as I've shown you in that previous slide there. So this is your EMF, this six volts is your EMF. This is R, so you've got R and you've got E, and we'll pick up the rest of the information along the way. There's current, which is 200 milliamps, and you've got this value of resistance here. But we're looking to basically both make both of those into to one single resistor in a minute. So first question there, what is meant by an EMF of six volts? So that's an electron moving force of six volts or an electromotive force of six volts. That's the energy supplied to the charges as they pass through the battery. That's what your definition of the EMF is. So like with the 1.5 volt battery I just talked about there, that's the energy that the charges get 
from the battery. Once that's connected to something else, you know, then you know you lose voltage, but that doesn't mean that the battery gives any less energy to those charges to move. If it's six volts, then that means if you want to be a bit, a bit more fancy about it, that um, you supply six joules of energy per coulomb of charge that passes through the battery. That's what this relates to. The battery is connected in series with two resistors, R1 and R2. Resistor R1 has a resistance of 20 ohms. The reading on the ammeter is 200 milliamps. We've identified E and we've identified R here. Show by calculation that R2 has a resistance of 8. So we'll start out with just jotting down what we've been given. We've got E as 6 volts. So that's the voltage that the battery has before you connect it to something. In reality, it loses some of that voltage as soon as you connect it to something else because of uh, resistances in the chemicals of the battery. We've got I as 200 milliamps. So we will need to convert that. We'll say 200 times 10 to the negative 3 amps. We've got R as 2 ohms. Now remember that internal resistance, unless you change the battery that you're getting your energy from, internal resistance stays the same all the time. A lot, one way a lot of people get confused is because VTPD and, and V lost change can change, um, they think that internal resistance changes, but it's always going to stay the same unless you change, you know, this battery, unless it's a different a different battery that you're getting energy from. And now we've got R that we are looking for the value for. So this is where you go back to the equations that we I uh, outlined a few minutes ago, either this or this, which are given as this and this in your data sheet. So probably the easiest one would be, well, I suppose it doesn't really matter what you do at this stage, it's all, it's all gonna end up uh, the same. So six is equal to 200 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by R plus 200 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by 2. So we get 6 as being equal to well, 200 times 10 to the negative 3 is 0.2. It's 0.2 R plus 0.4 which is is it 200 milliamps multiplied by 2? We're looking to solve for R. So we've got 6 minus 0.4 is equal to 0.2R. That little value there, that 0.4, that's I times small r. That's your lost volts. That's the voltage that goes missing. So therefore, 6 minus 0.4, which is obviously going to give you 5.6, that's your TPD. That's your, your terminal potential difference. So you, quite often with these problems you're actually figuring out quantities as you go through it whether you know but you, you don't know it so r will be 5.6 divided by 0.2 uh, which will give you 28 ohms but notice what i've done there is is just calculate a value for the external resistance so i've treated these two resistors as being one as being one single resistor rather than being the two together. So what I need to do now is figure out what this value of R2 is. So R1 plus R2 is gonna give me this total, this total resistance. R1 plus R2 will be 28 ohms. So if R1 is 20, then it's not hard to see that R2 is eight ohms. Part two. Calculate the reading on the voltmeter. The reading on the voltmeter is going to give you the terminal potential difference. It's never going to give you the EMF. You're never going to get a voltmeter there that's, that's going to give you that full 6 volts. Because as soon as you connect the voltmeter there, you know, you've got some sort of movement of charge in that circuit. Um, so you're going to internal resistance kicks in. So this is your terminal potential difference here. If you're wise about it, you'll know that that's, that's your loss volts here. That's your I times small r. And this is your I times big r. So you could do V equals I times big r, which would be 200 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by this value that you've just calculated, multiplied by 8. 
uh, which will give you 5.6. That's a perfectly valid answer. But, as we mentioned a few moments ago, that term there, as soon as you take this loss volts from this EMF, that's going to give you a terminal potential difference. So this leads to this 5.6 here. So you would get away with just writing down 5.6 volts there because you can see clearly from this equation what that is. But that relies upon you being able to look at this equation or to look at I big R plus I small R and know what each section is, which not everybody can do. Part C. The battery is now connected to two identical lamps as shown below. Describe and explain what happens to the reading on the voltmeter when the switch S is closed. So that's your terminal potential difference. What's going to happen to your terminal potential difference? As I always teach you to do, you know, work through this, you know, in, in symbol form, and then you can you can figure out how you're going to explain your answer. Uh, so look at this. You've got two lamps there. Two lamps are going to have some form of resistance, but it's not going to be anywhere near the resistance of a resistor. A resistor is designed to have resistance. Lamps are designed to, to not have very much resistance, but they still will have some. Whatever you connect to, to this battery, it's going to have some sort of resistance of its own. Um, so this resistance is going to be less. It's also going to be even more less because these are connected in parallel. And as you connect things in parallel, the overall resistance goes down. So your resistance is going to go down. So if resistance in your external circuit goes down, then it means that your current goes up, there's less push against the current. So if current goes up, you're looking at how that's going to affect your loss of volts. Loss of volts is V equals I times small r. So you're multiplying your internal resistance of two by a larger value. So therefore, your loss of volts is going to go up, which means that your reading on the TPD goes down because there's more loss of volts, so therefore, TPT goes down. And that's what you would use to structure your answer. We do that in equations sometimes. We write equations and we draw these arrows in. It's just a way of ordering your thinking for what's happening to all the variables and helping you to answer you know, a word answer, really, which is quite difficult, in a mathematical way. So resistance goes down. Overall resistance in the external circuit goes down. So current in the circuit goes up. Therefore, V goes I times smaller. is bigger. The loss of volts is bigger. More volts lost means that your terminal potential difference decreases. Okay, that's your calculation part. We've also got a graphical method, as I mentioned at the start there, for, uh, for figuring out things about internal resistance. So I'll go through this, show you a question, and then you've got a few questions you can do yourself. So this is voltage against current. If you plot voltage against current, as we did for our LO3 for higher physics, then you'll see something that looks similar to this. So as the, as the current increases, you can see that the voltage uh, goes down. That's just really what we're looking at in the previous question there. You know, current's increasing, which means more loss volts, which means that this voltage is, is continually reducing. So as you've got more current flowing through a circuit, the internal resistance is going to have more of an effect. So this value for voltage is going to go down. We can figure out a couple of things from from uh, graphs of uh, internal resistance. The first of those is the EMF. If you extrapolate this line back to here, then where that intercepts the y-axis there, the y-intercept is the EMF. So quite often you can be asked to figure out what the EMF is from, from a graph such as this. That's what you do, take it back here, that'll give you the EMF. There's another thing that we can take from this, we can take um, internal resistance. We can figure out internal resistance from this. Remember, V goes IR, so if you rearrange for R, it's V divided by I. And if we do V divided by I here, you know, that's basically gonna be the gradient. The gradient in here. So you can calculate what the gradient of that is, and that's equal to negative R. So your gradient, is negative r. So if you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and get a negative number, you flip that negative number and that gives you what the internal resistance is. So you'll normally get a negative number because it's a downward slope, 
flip that negative sign and that gives you your value of internal resistance. It's not hard to see where that comes from, but I'll show you in a question in a minute. There's one more thing that we can get from that, and that's the what we call the short circuit current. And the short circuit current is basically uh, the current that you would get if you just connected the, the two terminals of the battery together without any external resistance. So when you go to your equation, I big R plus I small r, then what you're basically doing, because this is what it looks like, you've got your internal resistance there, it's just like connecting those together. So you get rid of this term altogether. You get rid of the I times big R because there is no external resistance. It's like, the reason why it's called a short circuit is because you short out the, the external part of the circuit. So short circuit current, you figure out from E equals I times small r, or I is equal to E divided by R. So short circuit current, you can find from a graph there, but sometimes you've got to figure it out using uh, this equation here. So all you've got to do is remember that it's just like connecting the two terminals of the battery together. The only resistance you've got when you're looking at your energy considerations in this equation is the internal resistance. There's no external resistance, so this term disappears. E is equal to I times small r. So that's what you do in the graph. Here's a, a graph style question. So the following circuit's used to measure the EMF. It, it looks the same. Sometimes they might move this voltmeter up here or down here. It's, it's still the same circuit. Occasionally you've got an ammeter there. This resistor is variable, so that's how you can produce this graph. So this graph looks just like the one that I showed you a few minutes ago. Uh, use the information from the graph to find the EMF of the battery in volts. So we know the EMF is the is the y intercept. So you would take it across here and you would find that that was 4.8 volts for part one. Use information from the graph also to find the internal resistance of the battery. So pick a couple of points on here that are that are quite nice looking. Um, those two points, you know, they're nice. They're in nice even places. They're on the lines. There always will be a couple of points like that to choose from in a graph. Should you need to take values from it, and um, so th use this pair of coordinates here and this pair of the coordinates here to calculate what the gradient is. Don't use something like you know that, or you know something that's halfway between two. You know, it will be obvious from the graph that, that it's an exact point. You know, with a, with a nice round number for you to use. Uh, so we know that the gradient here is equal to negative r. So whatever value we get from that, we change the sign of it. So we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The points that I've chosen here um, are in the y direction 2 and 4. So it's 2 minus 4, which gives us our negative sign on the top. And then the x values are 1.4 here and 0 0.4 here. If you figure that out, you'll get minus 2 over 1, which obviously gives you minus 2. So we need to flip the sign of that. R will be 2 ohms. You figured out the internal resistance is by reading of the graph. B part 1. A car battery has an EMF of 12 volts and an internal resistance of 0 0.05 ohms. Calculate the short circuit current in the battery. Remember what we said for short circuit current. Um, it's basically taking this equation i times big r plus i times small r, eliminating this, and then using e equals i times small r. So for part one there, e equals i times small r. Your EMF, you've calculated, uh, not calculated rather, it's given here as 12, because it's a different battery altogether. Um, I you don't know, but you know that internal resistance is 0 0.05. Solve for I, and you get a whopping 240 amps. Part 2, the battery is now connected in series with a lamp. The resistance of the lamp is 
2.5 ohms, calculate the power dissipated in the lamp. So it's a combined sort of internal resistance equation where we bit off uh, equation work from, from using electricity back in standard grade. So we'll just get rid of this just now. So we're going to use the extended internal resistance equation, E equals I R plus R. E is uh, 12. We need to calculate current first. If we want to calculate what the power dissipated is, we need to know how much current's flowing through it. We could figure out how much voltage it has as well. So another way you could solve it. Uh, big R is 2.5, that's your external part of the circuit. Internal resistance, remember that never changes regardless of what you do, is 0 0.05. So we get 12 is equal to uh, 2.55i, which gives us i of 4.7 amps. If you're looking for the power dissipated from the lamp, you've now got resistance of the lamp and the current that goes through it, and so you can use P equals I squared R. You could have used figured out B and done P equals V squared over R, but this is just the way that I've done it. Uh, so I squared is 4.7 squared multiplied by R, which is 2.5, gives 55.4 watts. Occasionally you will get one of these power equations thrown in. If you're not sure of those, can't remember those, remember there are a couple of pages before your higher equations in the standard grade equation section. You've got P equals I squared R, P equals V squared over R. All those standard grade equations are, you know, yours to use if you if you need them at any point throughout the exam. So that's internal resistance. Really two types of questions you can be asked. The graph style question. The only thing we didn't get asked there was short circuit current, which you could potentially have, have figured out. Um, calculation part know what the, the, the individual parts of, of the equation are. This is your terminal potential difference. This is your, intern, uh, your, your lost volts. And know how to interpret it from a graph and show it.